All right, in this video, we're going to look at an uh, example of a linear approximation. And um, I had this information here. We're going to use that in a second, but I do want to explain um, what's really going on here. What is a linear approximation? If you see the square root of 84, I don't know what the square root of 84 is, not right off the top of my head, but um, that's what the linear approximation is going to let us do. We're going to get an approximation for this, but right off the top of your head, uh, how about the square root of 81? Isn't the square root of 81 equal to 9? And the square root of 100 is equal to 10. So therefore, 84 falls between 81 and 100. So the square root of 84 must be somewhere between 9 and 10. Now, without using a calculator, and that's we're not going to touch a calculator here, um, we're going to get a pretty good approximation of what the square root of 84 is. Now, to do that, before we actually do the problem and just use this right here, I want to explain where this is coming from. So let's look at a graph that I have made up. A graph that I have made up here. Um, this red curve is y equals the square root of x. And now what I've went ahead and done is I've kept that 81 deal in mind. 81 is close to 84. So on this graph, look at that point right there, 81 comma 9. The square root of 81 is equal to 9, so that's a point that lies on the red curve. This blue line that you also see here, this blue line is the equation of the line that is tangent to that point, 81 comma 9. That's an easy point for us to find on the square root function. And the reason why I'm picking that point is because 81 is very close to the number that we want to find, which is 84. So let's focus on the blue line and the red curve. If we zoom in on this point here, and we're still keeping the 84 in mind, if we keep on zooming in, notice the blue and the red almost become one curve. Here is 81, 9, and look down here, you can follow along here, here's 81, there's 9. 84, the square root of 84 is right about here somewhere, and like we said, it falls between 9 and 10, but notice what's important about this is that that blue tangent line and the red curve, you can't even tell the difference between them. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more. I mean, look how much I'm zooming in here. Okay, let me slide over some. Um, there's 81, 9. Here's 84, and you still can't see a difference between the blue straight line and the red curve. There is a slight difference between them. So here's the 81, 9. Let me zoom in over here on the 84. Let's zoom in a little bit more on this because we're interested in the square root of 84. I mean, I got to zoom in a long ways to start seeing the difference between these. So here's where here's when x is 84. There's the red curve. That's the true value of the square root of 84. Let's zoom in some more. So here's the true value of the square root of 84. Looks like it's a little bit bigger than 9.165, but what this approximation is going to give us, we're actually going to get this blue value right here of the straight line. Now, I've already got that equation over here, but um, We'll figure that out in a little bit. We actually don't even have to use it. But I want to show you that that blue line gives us a very good approximation of what the true value is. I mean, look at the difference between here. Here's 9.165 and here's 9.17. There's not a big, big gap between here. But that all revolved around us picking a value that was close to 84, like 81. All right, so what we're really going to find here is the value here, which is pretty doggone close to the true value that would be right there. Let's find that. Now, we want to use a linear approximation to estimate the following quantity. Choose a value of A to produce a small error. The value of A that I want to use here um, to produce a small error is going to be 81. 81 is going to be the numbers that we're going to be dealing here with the A's, so to speak. So to do a linear approximation, L of X means the linear approximation of 84. In this case, we're interested in the square root of 84. This is equal to F of A plus F prime of A times X minus A. Well, what is the function? Since we're trying to find a square root, let's let F of X equal the square root of X. And that's the same thing as x to the 1 half. All right. Um, how about the derivative? 
f prime of x, taking the derivative, if we pull the 1 half down, we have 1 half times x to the negative 1 half. Don't forget to subtract 1. That's the same thing as 1 over 2 x to the 1 half, which is the same thing as 1 over 2 times the square root of x. Now this is our derivative. And now, that value of a that we picked, we picked a number that was close to this, which is going to give us a close approximation. So um, our a value, as we said, a is equal to 81. f of a, well f of a, what's the square root of 81? The square root of 81 is 9, and f prime of a, the reason why I'm finding all these values, because we've got to plug them in, in up here somewhere, so I'm finding all of them right now. F prime of A, what's the derivative when X is 81? If we plug 81 in right here, F prime of A is going to be 1 over 2 times the square root of 81, which is 1 over 2 times 9, which is the same thing as 1 over 18. Now looking up here at this linear approximation, this formula, we have a F of A, it's right here, it's 9. We have F prime of A, which is 1 18. Now what do we plug into this x spot? That x spot is going to be the number that we're really trying to get. That's that 84. We want to plug 84 into there. So using all that, f of a, we said f of a was 9. So the square root of 84 is approximately 9 plus f prime of a, we said was 1 over 18 times x minus a. x is the number that we're really dealing with, the 84. Subtract the number that we picked that was close to 84 when we picked 81. So this is our linear approximation. Now let's take this right here and let's get a decimal for this. And let's go to three decimal places for this problem. So doing that, um, what do we have here? We got approximately 9 plus 1 over 18 times 84 minus 81 is 3. And we can simplify this to 9 and 3 over 18, which is the same thing as 9 and 1 6. Now, if we want a decimal here, this is a good approximation. 9 and 1 6, that's a mixed number. But suppose you had to round to three decimal places. So it's going to be 9 point something. If you don't know what 1 6 is as a decimal approximation, you can always do some long division. So 6 won't go into 1. But if we add a decimal, 6 will go into 10. One time, we have a remainder of 4. Let's uh, go at least three decimal places. Let's bring in another 0. 6 times 6 is 36, so that's pretty close to 40. And notice here, if we subtract, we're going to keep on getting this 40 over and over and over and over. Um, so therefore, we can say, I'm going to go one more spot. Uh, 6 times 6 is still 36. So 1 6 is 0.1666666. If we want to round this to three decimal places, how about 9.167? Since that 6 repeats, I rounded that last digit up to 7. So that's, a, uh, our, that's our approximation. The square root of 84 is approximately 9.167. Now, why does this formula right here work? Why does that formula work? The reason why is this. Let's go back to our graph. And let me zoom out a little bit. Let me get 81 and 84 on the same page if I can. Tell you what, I'm going to change the window. Let's do our x at 80, our smallest value at 81, our biggest value at 84. And let's go between... 9 and 9.2. All right. So here's our 81. And I'll tell you what, I want to copy this over to. All right, so copying this over, looking at this up close and personal. All right, it's hard to see the difference between that red curve and that blue line. I've already mentioned that. 
Um, 81, so right here was the, the easy point that we picked, uh, 81.9. And we're trying to find uh, right here 84. You can see a slight difference between them. Now the approximation that we got, again, that lies on that blue line, whereas the true value is slightly smaller, actually. But we're getting an approximation. Now why does this formula work here when we do uh, the L of X is equal to F of A plus F prime of A times X minus A. Well, what we're doing is we're taking F of A, that is that uh, 9, F of A we said was 9 back in our formula. So we're taking 9 and we got to add some more to it. That's why we're adding. We got to add to get up higher here to this blue. That's why we add. And now we're adding something based on the slope and the differences between the x. So really what's going on here for every, what was the slope? Our slope was uh, 1 18th for the derivative of f prime of a, 1 18th. So for every x that we go over, if we go over one unit to the right, we go up 1 18th of a unit. If we go over one more unit to the right, we go up another 18th of a unit. If we go over one more unit to the right, we go up another 18th of a unit. So to get from here, which was F of A, to up here to this blue dot, this approximation, what did we really have to do? For every time we moved over to the right, we moved right three units. That's where that 84 minus 81 came. That's where that three came into play. So if we take 1 18th, times three, as you can see, we had to go up 1 18th three times. That's why we're multiplying the slope times the differences in A. Again, every time you go over to the right, you gotta go up 1 18th. Over to the right one, up 1 18th. Over to the right one, up 1 18th. That's why we multiplied three times 1 18th, because that's how many times we really went up. Now, what are we adding that on to? We're adding it on to the original easy value that we picked, that f of a, which was 9. So visually, that's why the linear approximation works. Now, this approximation that we got, which is the blue dot, is that bigger or smaller than the true value? It's slightly higher, so it's going to be a little bit bigger. That linear approximation that we got, let's go back and look at it of 9.167, let's see what the square root of 84 actually is. The square root of 84, like I said, our, our approximation is a little bit bigger, so we should get something a little bit smaller, and uh, 9.165, that is a touch smaller than our approximation that we got over here. But again, um, I did want to explain why this formula works. You take that easy y value that you had and you're adding on how many times you have to apply that slope of the tangent line. Since we had to apply it three times, that was the difference between your two x values, 84 minus 81. Since we did that three times, we take three times that slope. But now, uh, the, the more of the story is this. If you can remember this formula right here, that's how you do a linear approximation. And uh, that's it for this video. Hope it helped.